encouraged by the fact that he's only 88 and I'm only 81, just saying, <laughs> it may take you a little while. <laughs> Have systemic fear, risk, or uh, systemic risk fears ever caused you to pause in your eagerness to buy equities? Um, you know, back in 2008, 2009, you know, were you, why weren't you more aggressive back then? Yeah. You'll probably find this interesting. Charlie and I, to my memory, in 53 years, I don't think we've ever had a discussion about buying a stock or a business or selling a stock or a business that has been where, where we've talked about macro affairs. I mean, it, it, if we find a business that we think we understand and we like the price at which it's being offered, we buy it. And it doesn't make any difference what the headlines are. It doesn't make any difference what the Federal Reserve is doing. It doesn't make any difference what's going on in Europe. We buy it. You know, there's always going to be good and bad news out there. And which gets emphasized the most, uh, is, you know, it depends on the moods of people or newspaper editors or uh, whomever. And there's, you know, there's a ton of bad. I bought my first stock, you know, in, 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 uh, in June of, in, in June of 42. And, uh, uh, you know, what had happened, you know, we were losing the war, you know, until the Battle of Midway. I mean, it, it, so here was a, a country that, every, you know, all, all my older friends had gone, you know, were disappeared. We weren't going to make any kinds of goods that were people wanted. We were going to build battleships and things to drop in the sea, and we were losing, you know. But stocks were cheap, <laughs> and uh, I wrote that article in October of 2008 in the Times. That I should have written a few months later, but. But in the end, I said, we've just had a financial panic, and it's going to flow over into the economy. And, you know, you're going to read all kinds of bad news. But so what? You know, America's not going to go away, and stock, stocks are cheap. You've got to, we look to value, and we don't look to headlines at all. And we really don't, everybody thinks that we sit around and talk about macro factors. I, we, we don't have any discussions about macro factors. Charlie? Yeah, but we did keep liquid reserves oh, yeah, sure. at the bottom of the panic that, if we'd known it was not going to get any worse, we would have spent. But that's, because we didn't know that. Yeah, we, 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 all, we know what we don't know. And we, we, all, we, we know we don't want to go broke. I mean, we start with that. And we know you can't go broke if you've got a, a fair amount of liquid reserves around and you don't have any near-term debts and so on. So our first rule is always to play it tomorrow, no matter what happens. Uh, but if we've got that covered and we can find things that are attractive, we buy it. Well, Charlie has a little company called the Daily Journal Company, and he sat there with a whole lot of cash, and, and when 2008 came along, he went out and bought a few stocks. He won't tell me the names of them, but, uh, uh, and he, you know, that was the time to use the money, not to sit on it. <clears throat> was that the name of a stock, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get anything out of them. Uh, when you look at this, 